Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm a volunteer here at Hospice Calgary, and I've been a volunteer for four years in different capacities, but mainly as a youth mentor for the Hangout and the Village. I'm Vicky, and I've been volunteering with Hospice Calgary and Rosedale for over 10, or about 10 years. My name is Susan Shipley Morgan and I volunteer for Rosedale. I actually started volunteering at the receptionist, reception desk in June 2018 and then um, kind of later 2019 and early into 2020 I started to work on the floor with the patients and I just started that and then um, the pandemic hit. So I haven't been back since then and I miss it there. Very much. Uh, I'm Tom Wood. My wife had cancer. Uh, she was one of the first people in the province to get a liver transplant some 24 years ago. And we had home care. The nurse of home care suggested we come here perhaps. 12 or 14 years ago to St. Center. And during the period from then until my wife died last April, we were uh, frequent flyers here. We came every week. Um, we participated in the programs, the Halloween parties, uh, Christmas stampede, and all that kind of stuff. We had good discussions with the people we had made friends, mourn the loss of friends, we welcome new people in. Uh, it's been overall a heartwarming experience for my wife. And speaking for myself, there are enough support spouses or friends that come to Sage Center with the people that actually have cancer that we made almost a separate subgroup of people where we'd carp and complain about things, the problems we have, and we resolve some of those issues as well. Again, knowing that other people have similar problems to you, they've solved them or you've solved them, lets you both come out ahead. My name's Riley Monahan, and I started here in the Children's Group Center around 2008, I think, after my dad and my sister passed away in a motor vehicle accident. Um, I started with counseling and I did kids camps and individual counseling and my mom did counseling too. We had a conversation while he was in Rosedale about the difference between being in the hospital and being at Rosedale. And he, my uncle passed away, my dad's brother-in-law passed away in October from, um, I think it was liver cancer. Um, it was cancer for sure, but I think it started in his liver. And my dad had gone out, I think in September, because it's his sister's husband, to see her and see how things were going. Um, and he came back from that trip very, very clear that that is not how he wanted to die. He did not want to die in hospital. And nor did he want to die at home. So when you eliminate those two, it kind of leaves you with hospice. Not fully understanding what a wonderful decision that was going to end up being. About 19 years ago when my husband passed away and my son was seven years old at the time. And I spoke to him a lot about the death and the grieving because it is a life-changing experience and for all age groups. Um, but particularly for young kids, um, you know, they're trying to put perspective and so I wanted to find somewhere where I could get extra support um, just to reiterate things that I was saying to him but in a different way and so that we weren't alone in this experience. So I researched different places and a lot of places they focused more on the um, the divorce part, but it wasn't related to grieving the death um, of a parent. Um, then I came across Hospice Calgary and they had a program 
um, the kids club. So I joined with my son and you know we had some sessions together and then um, he had his little group with the kids and I had mine with the adults and um, yeah so then through that experience as time went on I kept thinking it's such a great environment and such a community building experience within those sessions that one day I was hoping that I could give back in, in a certain way for the support that my son and I received. So I s started with Hospice Calgary as a client after two of my friends died and my counselor kind of suggested what was now at that time the Mentoring Through Grief program and I was really interested and wanted to kind of help others going through similar experiences and that Mentoring Through Grief transformed into the Village program which I continued my involvement. I always found the environment here very welcoming, very supportive. It was always a safe place for me and I had a really good connection with my counselor and just felt a lot of support and wanted, me to, wanted to be a part of that environment for other people. Five years ago, I lost my husband to cancer, uh, February 17th, 2015. And, um, like all families, when you go through the journey of cancer, um, certain parts of it are more difficult than others. And unfortunately, my husband, Sean, um, his passing was a very traumatic event for me. Anyway, we'd spent a few hours in emergency and the palliative team came in and said, you know, Susan, this is, this is it. Um, we're gonna do our best to make him comfortable. And, um, but you need to start calling everyone. So I can't say at that point I was surprised. I think Sean was probably a little bit more surprised than me. But you take that and you kind of swallow it and go, okay, you know, here we go. Um, we were lucky and I'm very grateful that uh, my boys at the time were 13 and 15 and Sean was lucid and he could say goodbye to them and they had each their own conversation with their dad and that was a, a beautiful thing. We get up the elevator to the new wing and the staff on the palliative care wing were really not prepared for us and a little bit um, I'd say frustrated, what are you doing here now? And I said, can we please just go to a room? My husband's dying. So they put us in a room and while we were in the room, three staff came in and said, we have to move him off the bed that he's on to another bed because um, they need this bed at the bone marrow transplant wing. And I said, everybody out of this room now, nobody is moving him off this bed. So everyone exited the room and within five minutes of that, he took his last breath. So my experience of my incredible husband dying was awful. And I carried a lot of guilt with how it happened. And I wished I would have stood my ground and forced them to allow us to stay in the, the room that seemed so peaceful and, and right for what we were going through. And with that guilt, you know, comes anger. And I had a lot of things to work through, losing my husband, now being a widow, raising two wonderful teenage boys. But in the back of my mind, I was so disappointed in how Sean passed away and I felt like I didn't honor his death as I should have and provided him with the dignity that he deserved. So it took three years of a little bit of soul searching but a realization that I needed to go through that process and see what the right way of dying looked like, if that's even a term. It's a term to me, the right way of dying because I believe that Sean died the wrong way. 
and that's what brought me to Rosedale.